So different from California and it's really a different experience being back home. I used to come to this farmer's market all the time. I went to college nearby. I used to come and pick up some food, some fruit, and then I would head off to class. I don't think I've been back to this farmer's market in like 10 years. Is it okay if I <laughs> take a photo of your flower? <laughs> Learning about where all of the things here actually come from, learning where the mangoes actually come from at this farmer's market is crazy. It's just really nice to be home and see it in a whole new way. the dog and we'll take you up and introduce you everybody. Okay, what's your name? This is Boone. Hi Boone. <laughs> Hello, thank you. <laughs> Hi Boone, I'm Manon. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the mango farm in the desert. Thank you. Wow. My wife Debbie, my Debbie. son Jason, Hi. and nice my son you. Barrett. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm Manon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, let us show you around. Yes, I would love yeah, to right. see the, the whole place. Yeah. Well, this is the, we're in the southwest desert. This is the salt sea you see right here behind you. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's right so there. It's a huge inland salt water lake about 200 feet below sea level. So my grandfather, he saw another farm across the Salton Sea have mangoes. So he started to bring a few in to try them out. Um, he started with a handful of varieties and we found that the two varieties, Valencia Pride and Kit, worked really well in the desert. And then from there, we just kept on adding. You know, I think we've gone over 30, 30, 30 to 40 different varieties so far. Right over here is our nursery. This is where we grow all our young trees and do our grafting and develop some of our new varieties. It's really like a jungle in here. In here, we're trying to attain the perfect moisture level, humidity, um, and uh, protect it from the wind. Wow, how many, how many varieties do you have in here? How many in, plants do you have? In here, we probably have over 12 varieties, and basically every different color is a different variety. That's how we kind of keep track. So peaceful in here. <laughs> Let me show you the water, part of the water system here. Okay. Over on this tree here. You see where it's got the yeah. banding there? That's where there's actually a probe it's inserted into the tree. And then there's a sanding unit that works off of solar and it sends all the data on my phone. And so what this probe does, it actually directly reads the amount of pressure that the tree is exerting to pull water up. So if there's not enough water in the soil, the tree has to work harder. And so I see it as a higher suction pressure 
you know, I don't know how, how much better, how much more efficient we can get than letting the trees themselves determine, determine their watering. Wow. Um, what are these? <laughs> <laughs> we bag the fruit. If the sun hits at a certain point on these mangoes, all the time, we'll get a sunburn. Right. And that'll okay. ruin the fruit. This is sunscreen. It's a sunscreen. It's very important. <laughs> That's right. You're born and raised here, and your whole family is here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, myself, my brother, um, we were both born just down in town uh, in Indio, and we're raised on the farm for the early part of our uh, years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we participated as kids do, just small chores here and there. And then we, you know, went through our, you know, high school, middle school years, and we were in and out of the farm, and then we kind of, you know, get out and learning the world, right, as mm -hmm. young adults do. And What was the thing that made you really want to come back here, dedicate your life to expanding the farm as a family? Well, I think it's, you know, we're just kind of lucky that it is here, for one, and it being here, you know, when you're young, unfortunately, I think so many times you take the things you have for granted. And going out into the world, giving a lot of different other uh, experiences a go, and then realizing kind of that the, gr the grass is not always greener on the other side, it's kind of where it's taken care of. And so you realize wherever you may have a foothold, I guess, or a place to call your own, you can just take care of it and make that place better, yeah. right? So. Yeah, I guess back to family mm -hmm. and what you grew up with and what you know. Yeah. I'm Sam. Manon. Manon. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, welcome in. This place looks like incredibly well styled. Oh, thank you. When Ray and I were opening Las Palmas, we, uh, our idea was to open a bar that happens to brew beer versus opening a, a traditional, what you would think of as a brewery. Uh -huh. So that's kind of how we went about just like, let's make this place like a reflection of us. So, you know, Ray's a skater and um, I like books. So it's just kind of like, I, I look at it like you're basically walking into our, our home here. So let's go check out the brewery. Okay. All right, follow me. So this is our small um, two barrel brew house. And mm -hmm. basically what that means is a barrel is, uh, in case you're unfamiliar, is 31 gallons of beer. Okay. Um, and so this keg would be a half barrel, 15.5 gallons. Okay. We package about four half barrels per batch. This is obviously tiny. Why did you decide to do this kind of unique way of, of brewing beer rather than the other way? When I'm making beer, this is much more of a feel process. I am certainly not a scientist. I'm creating something and I'm, you know, feeling certain things or like, yeah, the clouds on that day or how it's smelling. And that's kind of what drives me in my brewing process. Yeah, so this is, I think we're gonna call it uh, orange IPA. It's not as orange in color as maybe it will be in the end because you see there is like, it's almost a green hue from the hops. Mm -hmm. So once that, all the hops have kind of settled out during the crashing process, it will be a little more Orange in color, since we don't use any fruit in our beers, we'll write on our menu, hey, this orange IPA has notes of mango and citrus. And then people will drink it and say, well, I really taste the mango and citrus. And then we'll have to say, well, there's no mango and citrus in there, but the hops give off those flavors. I 100%, 100% smell mango. Yeah. It's like just... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm blown. I don't know if you just got in my head or if that's no, like, yeah, it maybe, actually just maybe a straight little, up uh, smells like mango to me. All 
I've been, you know, off-roading, camping um, most of my young adult life and into my adult years. And I want to I wanna set my vehicle up to be able to go further, get more remote places, and be, like, self-contained once I'm out there. Yeah, we'll go, you know, 100 miles into the middle of nowhere and camp for a couple of days. I'm really glad you let me wear your hat because it feels like I'm riding a bull. It, it's not that different. Ooh. Some people never get out of the city and they don't even know this is here. It just feels like you're on a completely different planet. It feels like you're in another world. I brought tons of Whoa. Whoa. alcohol. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, hi. So nice to see you. Yeah, it's so, so nice to see you. So let's try this Let out. Let me put some. So I brought some mangoes. Uh -huh. I and brought then... some green mangoes. And I brought some ripe mangoes. And I'll lay them out here. We definitely have to wash them. But... These are straight from a farm. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're actually straight off of the tree. Oh, and that is actually from this brewery that I visited that was incredible. They do basically natural beer, and they also have natural wine. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's good. Oh, I love this. I love yeah, it. very, very good. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. He recommended it, he chose it for me, and I think he just got it right because I love orange I think wine. this is perfect for our chicken and uh, mm -hmm. the mango salad. Let's start. So what is beer can chicken? Because I've never had that, I've never made it. Uh, so uh, it's basically a chicken with a beer on it, like it's it's like on the beer can. The beer can, yes. Okay. <laughs> is this at all like a, because you know, I'm, Phil, I'm half Filipina. Yes, you are. I, I don't know this recipe. Is this something that is done very often in the Philippines? Oh, no, not really, but Filipinos love beer. <laughs> this I can agree with. <laughs> <laughs> we should put more salt here. So yeah. there's like flavor on our chicken. And it's about time to put it on yeah. the and can. Then, and I have to see how this works. Yes, so to put it, just put it there, carefully. Oh my. And there, there it is. It's, it's standing. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. looks great. It looks great. <laughs> and and then, then he just goes into the oven like that? Uh-huh. And what about um, the mangoes? What are we going to do So with the that? mangoes, let's make the sauce first. What, what is the way that you cut a mango? Like, what do you so think is So this is how way? we do it. So not this way, but this way. With this, With this sort, okay. Uh huh. This is the peat. So it would be like. Then slice it like this. That's it. Wow, that was perfect. Have to taste it. Mm, it's good. I love it. Mm, so it's good. Not, so so good. Yeah, it's not that mm -hmm. spicy. No, not at all. I can handle that. Yeah. This is the challenge. For our salad, we need to peel this. So that's hard. How did you come up with this green salad recipe? This is actually a recipe from like my grandmother's recipe. Oh. It's an old heirloom recipe. Mm -hmm. And most of the, like, it's perfect for grilled chicken. 
for grilled pork, like as a, anything aside side or a roast chicken. It's just perfect as, as it is. This is calamansi. This is the Filipino lemon. Ooh, it's hot. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, it's smoking hot. Yes. <laughs> Wow. It is. It's so crispy on both sides. See, on all sides, yes. it's crispy. With the beer below, put it safely in the plate. On the plate. That's it. Wow. All right. Yay. Here's our chicken on beer with the mango sauce. Wow. It's beautiful. Isn't that it? looks amazing. It is. Cool. Oh, juicy. See how juicy it is. <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh very, my gosh, very, look at that's that. That's the beer, that's the beer can. Yes. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mm. That's so juicy. That's so juicy, right? It's not dry at all. Wow. I think that goes so well together, the tartness of the salad. Mm -hmm. So having the tart mango and the sweet mango like together. Totally balanced. Forever. I think I'm gonna do that forever always. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I've been doing everywhere is taking a photo on my disposable camera. Oh, okay. Do you think I can take one of, of you? Of course. Are we doing a selfie? Or No, I'm gonna take one like right. this and then maybe I can also do a selfie. Okay. Ready? <laughs> oh, I know it's so like anticlimactic a little. Um, Here we can do a selfie. Good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Nice to have you back. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Do I just yeah. hop in? Hop in. We're re almost ready. Okay. Wow. Whew. This is a beautiful sunrise. It is. You get to see this every day that you're harvesting? We do. All of these should be ready to go? No, no. No, we only pick them as they ripen. Okay. So that's why we go through every third day and look for color. So they just started ripening, right? Because when I was last here, yeah. it, was, it was just not ready at all. We were a month uh, off our normal schedule because it was a cooler winter. Okay. So yeah, they, they are finally starting to ripen, so it's, it's time. Hey, Rod. Nice to see you back at the farm. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. You mind showing me uh, what we're looking some for? of your picking techniques? Oh, absolutely, here. What basically we're looking for here on the, on the we pick ripe, tree ripen, mm -hmm. and since everything's going to market, and in this case, tomorrow, we look for that heavy ripened color. Now, this is the Valencia Pride, so it, it has a color change that we can see. Mm -hmm. A lot of varieties don't have that, and you actually have to go in and touch the bottom of them and feel a little bit of softness. This is a, this is a little picking basket. You want to try it? Yeah, I do. All right, try that it, little one right there. That little one. Okay, I see it. I see it. Yeah, just go right up All underneath. Right. <laughs> I'm nervous. Go up underneath. Grab. So now there. pull it back. And do I pull it fast? Nah, it does. Yeah. Pull. There you go. And it just drops into the bag. There he is. There it is. <laughs> it's ready a little a little one, but. Do you feel like this is a good one for me to, to try? taste test? Mm. That hey. is, it's so, so soft. And it's, it's so, so flavorful. Yeah, the sugar Incredible. and acid uh -huh. balance and everything. Mm -hmm. The vine ripe mango, there's nothing like it. Okay. <laughs> Mm. 
you say this is a jumbo or no? Yes. Yes? And you'll see too, once you put it in the box and you're packing, you'll see if, you, you know, one stands out that it's not in the right box. One thing that really strikes me about this process since you've had me here mm -hmm. helping is that it's so tranquil here. It's so peaceful. It's almost therapeutic. Is that, do you, is that something that's really common or is that really just here that it's so? You know, I think it's just the small family farm atmosphere. Uh, you know, the corporate farm has its place, obviously, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, it's the small family farms that can kind of adjust and, and fill in those little niches and things. Pick, oh, just the ripeness that they want, get them to the market, get it in people's hands right away and give them an experience that they just can't get anywhere else. That's something really special, having it hand-picked, having it done by hand. Seems like it brings uh, something incredibly unique and special to this process. That's it. It'll, it'll always be that way. How's it going out here? Uh, it's going. Yeah, they always come in waves. You just opened right now, right? Um, I mean, yes. <laughs> Actually, I do, I do remember this one because it's such a funny shape. I remember um, putting this in the box. It looks like a little heart. Here you all your change. There you are. Do you need a bag? Enjoy. They definitely just officially opened and it's now kind of insane. It's hard to even get in. They're so popular and famous. People are just like lining up for these mangoes. It feels really enriching to have something like this. It like doesn't, because when you like have something from the supermarket, you like don't necessarily feel the same delight. Oh, yeah. See that? I started just delivering, you know, potatoes, and, you know, not knowing what I'm delivering to knowing what, you know, what this is exactly. I look at it, I look at the list, and, like, I feel the connection. I see the name, and I see the connection. I see the, the face of the person, you know, who grew it. He says, I mean, we sell, it, we sell it out every week. You know, we have to get more and more. People can't get enough. Personal favorite. It's really nice. Yeah, I like it. It's nice and tucked away back here. Yeah, it seems very secret. All right, so we got beautiful light. Figure a little sunset snack and some drinks. Sounds amazing. Um, How yeah, can I help? Some, I'll just set out some ingredients and we can kind of tag team. We can start with the guacamole, <laughs> with the diced mango. I try and make real food opposed to like camp food, you know, like it just, it's just kind of a fun thing to, fun ritual. Whoa, look at that. See, that's perfect. I'd say I know how to cut a mango. I would say that too. Say 10 out of 10. To, normally I just eat it off at this point, but we won't do that. All right. We're gonna have a nice sunset. There you go. Lovely. That's for you. All right. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For Hopefully making this. it tastes this. as good as it looks. <laughs> I hope. OK. Very bubbly. Thank you. 
reactions? They're so good. Okay. It's okay. really good. So I like to hear. Really... The mango is honestly the way it hits like the sweetness with the spicy and salt. I was gonna say that it adds this little sweetness, but it's not too much. Mmm. And the texture. What would you say is your favorite thing about living this kind of lifestyle? Um, I think just the remoteness of the places and the views, like when, and, well, I would say the discovery, like when you find a new place, probably one of the most magical experiences. Dispersed camping on public land is like, it just feels like it's in your soul, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's right about that time. All these rocks are gonna light up. Smile. As someone from California to meet so many other people from California or living or working in California. Everything that we were focusing on was all about handcrafted things and small artisans of certain things. And I feel like I discovered a whole new part of California that I never saw.